Hello everyone, welcome to A plus PI. In this video, we're going to be adding powers of I. This is a topic that I forgot to cover in the lecture videos. Hopefully this video will serve that purpose. So we have a sum I plus I squared plus I to the third power plus so on and so forth all the way up to the 100th power of I. And we're going to evaluate this sum. As you know, hopefully, you've seen the videos or you are familiar with complex numbers, i is the number that could be defined as the square root of negative 1 or the number, more precisely, whose square equals negative 1. Because in algebra, when we try to solve polynomial equations, sometimes you have to find a number whose square is negative, but that number doesn't exist in the real world or in real numbers. So we had to invent a number whose square equals negative 1. So by definition, i squared equals negative 1. Make sense? So that's what we're going to use. But before I evaluate the sum, I'm going to show you how we can proceed with powers of i, what are some of the special properties, and how you can solve this problem in a matter of seconds, not minutes. So let's get to work. We could also write this sum using the sigma notation, obviously. I hope you are familiar with sigma. If not, don't worry about it. It's fairly straightforward. This just means that first use k equals 1 and evaluate this expression inside. This is sigma, the Greek letter. That's an uppercase, lowercase. Sigma is very different. So if k is 1, this becomes i to the first power or just i. And then the next value needs to be used until you reach 100. So the next value, and sigma means add, because sigma is for sum. And then k equals 2 comes up, and that gives us i to the second power, and then i to the third power, and then the fourth power. But instead of writing all these powers up to 100, we can just use three dots or ellipses to indicate that everything in between is going to be added. Make sense? So that's the sum we're so trying to evaluate. And let's see how we can use some shortcuts. So we're going to talk about powers of i first. What is i to the power 0? That should be 1. Just like any other number to the 0 power, it's 1. And then i to the first power is obviously i itself, right? And then i to the second power by definition is negative 1. So far, this should be all straightforward, right? We basically use common rules. And now here's the interesting part. How do you evaluate i to the third power? And we can do this in, you know, different ways, but I guess the, the easiest way to do it is writing this as i squared multiplied by i. And since i squared is equal to negative 1, this is just going to give us negative 1 times i, which can be written as negative i. In other words, i to the third power is equal to negative i. And you can easily verify this, like if you add i to both sides, this should give you i cubed plus i is equal to 0, which is true, because if you factor out i, just like any other variable or number, then you get the following, and this is true because i squared plus 1 is equal to 0, right? So, you know, there's a couple different ways to look at it, but to keep a long story short, i cubed equals negative 1. Don't worry, I'm going to list the powers at the end. And what about i to the fourth power? This is the most interesting one. And you can do this in more than one way. For example, you can say, hey, I want to use i cubed times i, because when you multiply, you add the exponents, and i means i to the first power, right? And i cubed is known to be negative i from the previous power, and that's going to give us negative i, right? i cubed is negative i, and I multiply that by i, that's going to give you a negative i squared, but i squared is negative 1, so negative i squared is supposed to be positive 1. Again, that's something we always use. Great, so that tells us i to the fourth power is 1. And this is interesting because we were able to get a real number by raising i to a power, and that happens to actually negative 1 is a real power of 2. I should say a positive number. We could get a positive number by raising i to a power, and the smallest positive integer that satisfies it is the fourth power. What happens to i to the fifth? Well, the rest is easy because you're going to get into a cycle. i to the fifth is i to the fourth times i to the first, which is the same as i to the first. And then i to the sixth is i to the fourth times i squared, which is the same as i squared, which is negative 1. So 
is just going to repeat. i to the seventh is going to be i to the third, which is negative i, and then i to the eighth is just going to be i to the fourth squared, and which is one. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, to evaluate i to the fourth, we could also use i squared squared, which also gives us the same thing. So you could also write this as i squared squared, but i squared is negative one, and negative one squared is positive one. Make sense? So no matter how you do it, i to the fourth power equals one. Let's go ahead and summarize this. We could basically write i to the first is i, i to the second is negative one, i to the third is negative i, and i to the fourth is one. And then guess what? It's just going to repeat the same cycle, i negative one, negative i one, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Okay, you get the idea? Okay, so we can generalize this in so many ways, but I'm going to leave it for another problem, and I just want to get to the problem that we have and show you how we can solve these kinds of problems. Okay, you know one, one math book said to the other, you've got problems. Anyways, that's a cheap joke, but anyways, I just felt like saying it. So this is the sum we're trying to evaluate. I have one, the first power through 100th power. So how do you deal with something like this? Well, one thing we didn't talk about. We talked about powers of i, but what happens if you add them? Let's take a look. If you add i plus i squared plus i cubed plus i to the fourth, this becomes i minus 1 minus i plus 1. Now negative 1 and positive 1 cancel out, i and negative i cancel out, and you end up with 0. And then when you get to i to the fifth, it's going to give you i again, and the same thing is going to happen over and over and over. So groups of four, the consecutive powers, will always give you 0. Okay. Always. No matter what number you start with, by the way, because this is going to be a cycle, kind of like a cyclic, I don't know, group, series, sequence, whatever. And it's just going to give you zero, as long as you are consecutive. So we have a sum of consecutive powers, but how do you deal with this? Like every four, group of four will give you a zero. And let's take a look. This is going to give me i to the first, i squared, i cubed, and then i to the fourth, right? And then I'll have i to the fifth, i to the sixth, i to the seventh, and i to the eighth. Of course, we're going to have more and more power. So if you look at each group of four, we're going to get a zero. So we kind of have to think about how many terms are there, and what's the remainder when that number is divided by four, because all the groups of four is going to give me zero, but of course, there might be some leftovers at the end, right? Let's find out. How do you find the number of terms? One through 100. 100 is divisible by 4. Therefore, therefore, this is a multiple of 4. So you can basically make 25 groups of 4, starting with this first group and the second group. And the last group you probably know is going to be 97, 98, 99, and 100. The final terms, that's also going to be 0. This is our 100th, I mean 25th group. And the sum is also 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.